you are tuning in. I want to know if this uh, audio is coming through fine. This is a video that I'm doing to record some stories about my music to share with folks that want to know a little bit more about the pieces that I've written and what went into them, the influences me as a musician over the years. But first, I need to know if we are getting sound coming through. So let's check real quick. I'm going to look on my Facebook here and see. It looks like the sound's coming through fine. Okay, great. So the piece I'm going to talk about tonight is from my album, Real Life, that came out in 1993 on Amazing Records right here in Austin, Texas. And it's called, uh, I'm going to talk about the piece, Dance of the Prairie. So it's, it's my uh, goal here to have a little bit of fun, just for those of you that want to dig deeper and know about some of the pieces that I've written over the years, this is a way to get to know it. And some of, the, of my influences, you can go down the rabbit hole and learning about um, these other amazing artists that are on the earth that you probably know. One of them is Pat Metheny, another one's Lyle Mays, another is uh, Jaco Pastorius. And I'm holding these juggling balls that I got today for a reason. Aren't they beautiful? They're knitted. And there's a story about uh, Lyle Mays, who was Pat Metheny's collaborator for many, many years, was an avid juggler and he would juggle backstage um, before performances something to kind of get himself centered and so I just started to, I decided to start learning how to juggle and I can do two in one hand it's hard to but I'm still working on the three um, three balls and apparently Jaco Pastorius took lessons from Lyle Mays backstage so the piece I'm talking about today that I wrote uh, about 1989 is called Dance of the Prairie and it's on my real life album that came out in 1993 and I wrote this piece when I was inspired first of all actually I wrote this piece as a string quartet in 1989 I was house sitting for a friend who was a violinist in the Austin Symphony and went over to his house and this was of course before the age of the internet and cell phones and so a great a, a, a nice pastime for me was just sitting at the piano and writing something and so I was there for I think 10 days and I worked on writing this um, sort of pentatonic <laughs> lick like that I started writing that pentatonic lick and from that pentatonic lick sprung forth this entire piece that was interrelated so um, that was for string quartet so I wrote that for string quartet and then a few years later I was looking back at it and I thought hmm, I wonder if I could arrange this for a group I had with um, Elias Hesslinger, Steve Zirkel and Chris Serrells and I was very influenced all of all of us were very influenced by the musicians around that time in the 80s growing up when I went to Austin High here in Austin I would go get the the jazz is or the downbeat magazine and, and see all of the the new albums that were coming out from Michael Brecker and Pat Metheny and Jack D. Jeanette and so those are those were our big heroes we were so influenced by them at the time coming through high school that that we wanted to put together a group to follow in their footsteps so that's kind of was my goal with that group and Steve Zirkel was a bit of our men a bit of a mentor to us here in Austin. He was 12 years older than me, and he was he played with Mitch Watkins and Beto Elos Fairlanes here in Austin, Texas. Those are some other artists that you can look up on Spotify. And so it was a dream for us to get Steve Zirkel to play on Fightless Electric Bass with us in this ensemble. And on this particular piece I was playing, I played guitar. So I took that string quartet piece and I rearranged it for this group and brought in what I thought were each of the players strengths and we were also at the same time playing um, paying homage to these musicians that we loved so what I did was I, I, 
I wanted to create this section in the piece. One of the things I loved about Pat Metheny was not only was he very versed in the jazz music that went before him, bebop, swing, blues, but he wanted to create a new vocabulary, a new language that was more um, specific to him as an artist. And that to him, to be a jazz musician meant bringing your own, bringing something of, of your own to the music to, to contribute to, to jazz, not just imitating the players that have been before you or emulating the players that came before you. So what I think the things I loved about Pat, Pat Metheny is he brought that sense of folk music, the Americana music, into a jazz setting where you'd improvise. So this song on uh, the 8081 album, it's called Two Folk Songs, uh, really influenced me because it had this strumming thing. And Pat Metheny does a lot of strumming. So it's kind of cool. The idea is that he took the strumming technique, which had pretty, pretty much been ignored in jazz guitar settings, and made something musical out of it and used it as a device. And so I decided I wanted to do the same thing for this piece, Dance of the Prairie. Uh, and I ended up playing um, nylon string. And Pat Metheny on this cut was playing a steel string guitar. And then also you can hear on it, you've got Jack D. Jeanette playing these really wild drums. And Jack D. Jeanette had been playing with Miles only just 10 years earlier than this recording. So he reinvented jazz drums. I think my mom just went for a walk. <laughs> and in this, this very free way of playing within the music. And so Chris emulated Jack D. Jeanette's playing on my composition, Dance of the Prairie. So here's, here's a little bit of the, um, the song. I'm just going to play like less than 30 seconds so we won't get canceled. But you can hear... strumming and the really intense okay so it's uh, this kind of thing so you can hear the strumming you can hear the the drums playing along with the strumming guitar so we have a section in the piece on dance of the prairie where it's just like that uh, the other thing is that um, Charlie Charlie Hayden is on this and so Zorkel was playing fretless electric bass mm. on my piece. And I said to Zorkel, hey, I want you to play kind of how Charlie Hayden plays on this. So the guitar is really driving hard with rhythm and the, and the drums. That's like the river. And the bass, instead of nor normally the bass in, in a chaotic situation like that, the bass would really be laying it down so that everybody has an idea of where, where home is. Well... I said, if you listen to this Charlie Hayden, he's doing more of a thing like this. So it's it's not necessarily on the downbeats, but kind of flowing in odd phrases. And we had to work on that a really long time for him to kind of get the idea that I was going for, but for him to do it in his own way, for Zirkel to do it in his own way and on a fretless electric bass, and I thought he really nailed it. So I thought all of us together, and then of course Elias Hesslinger on saxophone, we went to high school together and told him to just, hello? Okay, and I told him to just let loose and do whatever he wants, Coltrane, Brecker, Elias Hesslinger, just go, go crazy on it. So there is a couple of sections where we go off into this kind of folk song thing, and Elias is just improvising and the energy is going nuts, and then Zorkel's playing kind of a, I would say it's a free bass line, but not your typical bass line where he would be laying down the, the groove. And eventually it does kind of build up this tension to at some point he does go to a, to a more of a grooving kind of Latin thing. But before that, we totally sort of took this piece from the 8081 album as, as a, as a template and recreated it on um, my piece, Dance of the Prairie. And I thought, I mean, this is one of the most complex pieces I've ever written, but at the same time, it is one of the most free pieces I've ever written. So when you hear it, you may be like, wow, this is crazy. What, like, how did, you know, uh, it's a lot of notes. Like, you know, Mozart was told at one point, you know, just cut some notes out. 
of course that was the dramatization in the movie Amadeus but um, everything I tried to write the piece where everything is related in some way or another to that initial first um, pentatonic melody that you hear at the top of the piece and so one of the, some of the things that I did is I took that pentatonic melody I slowed it down half time so instead of da 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 you hear da 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 and I make a melody out of it. So at the end you'll hear that. I took all that material, slowed it way down, and created some more melodic material that's slower and more like a ballad. But there's real specific things happening in the guitar part that were written out at the end. So it's it's got a heavy classical influence and but it started out again as a string quartet. And then we took that material and repurposed it for this ensemble. So Zirkel's playing fretless electric bass, emulating kind of a Jocko thing, but at the same time also from this one song that Charlie Hayden is on, the idea of playing that free bass. Then you've got um, Elias Hesslinger doing his free form saxophone, and this was on soprano sax, whereas on this cut, uh, two folk songs, Michael Brecker's playing tenor sax. Um, Chris Serrells was probably 22 at the time. I was probably 23 when we recorded this. Elias, 23. Circle is probably 35 or 36. We did it to live, uh, to two-inch tape, I believe, at Music Lane Recording Studios here in Austin, Texas, which the building is still there. I think it's a music venue now. Maybe it, not, maybe not, might not even be a music venue, but it's right off of I-35 and, and around 6th Street. Um, so we did that live. I remember saving up from my day job to get these sessions at this studio, Music Lady Recording, and it came out on the album Real Life, um, all these sessions. So, and most of them we put everything down live together and we went back and fixed things and punched in as you did. In, in the day. Um, we also did uh, several cuts just live to DAT tape, digital audio tape. One of them is called Dance, uh, not Dance of the Prairie, I'm sorry, uh, When Sunset Falls. <laughs> and then another is, I'm trying to remember. Okay. But anyway, anyway, that's all about Dance of the Prairie, which you can listen to in the link below. Or you can go on any music outlet, look up Will Taylor, Dance of the Prairie, and it should come up um, off of my album, Real Life. And it's something I'm really happy that we recorded this and that we uh, documented this time, which was a time very different from now when we had time to get together and experiment and play some of these ideas that took that they actually would take time to execute, you know, because there was a lot of written parts and a lot of free parts and and really investing the time to try to, to make an idea work. And I think it really worked as well as the Well You Need It cut that's on this album, which is also an example of something that's very structured but also has free sections in it as well. Uh, I remember going down to a jazz conference in San Antonio around the time I was before I was releasing this, so it was about around 1992, and I went down there with Tina Marsh, and we played it for a record A&R person. There was like a, a seminar where we could play tapes, and they were very impressed with it, and they said, wow, this is very original, and um, yeah, it was nice to have that feeling of hearing from somebody at a company that, that uh, that it had originality. So this was after I had played with Turtle Island, the Turtle Island Quartet around 1991. So I'd already been out on tour with them, a jazz string quartet. So anyway, check it out, Dance of the Prairie, released in 1993, featuring Elias Hesslinger on sax, Steven Zirkel on fretless electric bass, Chris Serrells on drums, and me on the original writing of the song and um, on a nylon guitar. So you don't really hear nylon guitar much in this kind of setting with strumming and you hear it a lot in the sambas, right? So 
So that'll be the end of this first uh, video about my music. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you at a concert soon. You can check out uh, my work in the world of concerts at concertsinthedark.com. That's where you find our schedule. Or if you want to come out for a Strings in the Woods event where I play music out in the woods, that's austin.stringsinthewoods.com or stringsinthewoods.com is the general website. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you'll come back and hear the next story, and I hope you'll check out the music. Again, it's off the, the album is 8081 by Pat Metheny, Two Folk Songs. It's the song that really influenced this Dance of the Prairie, and Dance of the Prairie is on real life. Just look up Will Taylor, Dance of the Prairie, and there's links below if you want to check it out. I'd love to hear from you. Make some comments on the video, or if you got this in an email, I'd love to just send me an email back and let me know what you thought of this song story and if it influenced the way that you heard it. Um, I hope to see you out there. Thanks for listening and watching too.